ya bu skaju. Hemen burada katkı sunma anlamında. Well, just to contribute to the topic. In fact, maybe I can ask one question to Professor Naim Sala. I can also say it in the chat box. So regarding the importation and exportation of the collected leeches, what about the health checks made? So for the, the uh, exports and imports of Turkey, what is the uh, control and checking process? Thank you. Thank you for the question. So, of course, I was speaking for Turkey, uh, when Turkey is exporting all the uh, fisheries uh, procedures will be uh, applicable. For example, it is mandatory to get a site certificate. Uh, first of all, the origin of collection has to be known and uh, a certificate will be obtained. And also, you know, uh, there are provincial uh, directions of the uh, Ministry of Agriculture uh, that are authorized in the CIGAD. And a veterinary health check uh, certificate is required in order to get some product out of the country. It's a health uh, certificate. You also need to obtain it. And then then with the approval of the DG for Agriculture and Fisheries, a site a certificate is issued. I think tomorrow, uh, Ms. Emel is going to speak about it, and also the authorities from the ministry will uh, speak tomorrow as well. Site a certificate is issued in four copies. The uh, dispatcher, the ministry, the buyer uh, will need one copy each, because when you are clearing the, the leeches and the customs, uh, you need to have uh, an exact match uh, in terms of weight and quantity. And uh, the same procedures are also sought in importing into Turkey. And I believe that the ministry is checking uh, the same uh, parameters as well. Thank you. Sergey, can I can I please like a question? Sergey, there is another question that I can um, uh, translate is... for you. I have a question. In different countries, for example, in Ukraine, and I know that in Russia as well, it is allowed to import and export the leeches that are produced in aquaculture. Uh, what about Turkey? Do you have aquaculture farms in Turkey that produce enough amount of leeches for sale, for the uh, export, and so on? Так, меня было слышно, да? А, на английский, хорошо. На английский, я думал, на турецкий. Well, Professor, would you like to take the chance to answer? Yes, uh, because there was a question about the capacity that is enough for exportation in the aquaculture facility as well. I didn't listen to the question. Would you please uh, repeat the question or, okay, I can answer the question instead of you. Okay, Sergey asks the following. Uh, oh, sorry, Sergey, let me respond to your question. There are eight licensed facilities in Turkey. Tomorrow I will be talking about this. Of course, there are some problems in production and we never uh, uh, check their presence. This is reality. And as far as I know, the total capacity uh, is about 6,700 kilograms. This is the permitted licensed capacity for Turkey. Mustafa, I have to make a correction here. In fact, up to date figure uh, from the DG is 8,172 kilograms. 8, yeah, I think this is a total figure including uh, the uh, preliminary uh, licensing. This is a total uh, capacity. 
but actually there are some production problems and i can clearly say that we can not always retain uh, attain this figure uh, so the uh, uh, aquaculture farms the facilities have to take many steps and uh, since Uh, the DG for uh, aquaculture and fisheries has the authority here. Uh, I would like to give the floor to Nuran Chala because she is dealing with the uh, licensing operations. Hello to uh, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizer, uh, Sparta University of Applied Sciences and FAO. Uh, so, in fact, uh, distinguished researchers shared very valuable information uh, with us. In fact, uh, leech uh, production, leech aquaculture is not a very historical event in Turkey. It has a history of, a history of about six or seven years and the total uh, capacity is 8,172 kilograms and also when you think about the pre-licensing period uh, the total capacity uh, is about 2.5 thousand kilograms so in future i think the farms will uh, obtain better results and uh, some farmers in fact are applying in order to do exportation uh, but this is a new topic for us and the outputs of this webinar will be very important for us and i would like to thank everyone for the valuable information that has been shared so far in fact tomorrow we will be speaking uh, on behalf of the ministry we're going to cover the details in the presentation tomorrow if there is another question, I'll be glad to answer. Well, I also have a question. So, uh, Professor Mustafa Ceylan, do we have time? I have a question for Dr. Sebastian. So he uh, uh, introduced the iDNA method, which was very interesting for me because this is also very problematic in Turkey. Uh, there are eight farms in Turkey currently doing the aquaculture. Uh, and uh, sometimes we have problems to understand if they are coming from the aquaculture or coming from the wildlife. And it's important to make sure because we have to protect the human health and also the nature. Uh, so the products coming from the aquaculture. In order to check this, can we use this um, methodology, iDNA methodology? Uh, can you just provide uh, us with some hints? Yeah, I think uh, it's it's a really good question and one that's that's important, as you say. Um, you know, the, the iDNA I think is the best way to to try to approach this question. Uh, I'm not I, I I'm not saying that iDNA will provide a, a complete answer for it. I think that there are farms that that look quite different in composition. Farms that might be outdoors, uh, you know, that might be uh, human-made um, sort of experimental bodies of water. Um, so that it's out, outdoors and, and the leeches are free to feed on any, any animals that are there. But I think uh, most of the time when we think about leech farms, we think about uh, maybe bovine blood or, or cow's blood that's being fed or may, maybe pig's blood in some cases, although it seems that, that that's not too good for the leeches. Um, that's what we think about when we think about, um, you know, uh, leech farms in general. I know that's normally how, how they do it for the North American medicinal leech in Canada. Um, but again, I don't know too much about the composition of leech farms in, in uh, Europe, but I think that, I think you're right. I think iDNA is one of the ways in which we can do this and, and the, the wider distribution or the wider diversity of, of um, prey items inside of the leech, I think the more reason we have to believe that they were collected in the wild. Well, let me say one more th thing. In our farms, uh, for feeding the uh, leech, only sterile blood that is obtained from the ministry can be used. So when the bovine animals are being slaughtered in the slaughtered houses, the blood is uh, exported there and used in feeding the leeches. And, uh, I believe this methodology will be helpful to us. So, in conclusion, thank you very much. I have one more question, but it is for Professor Naim Salam. Let's get the question. Thank you. 
very much for the presentation, Professor uh, Naim. You talked about the uh, diversity of leeches uh, and the population around the world. I think we have uh, information about the populations that are available in Turkey. Uh, what about their adaptability to the changes? For example, can you say that the Verbona is more adapted to aquaculture? So around the world, is there any better adapted species for aquaculture? Evet. <gülüyor> Onun alanına çok fazla yani konuşacak onlara girmeden şöyle diyebilirim. Well, there will be a separate presentation about this tomorrow. I don't want to go into details of that, but Herod of Verbana is a dominant, predominant one. In, in some articles, we can confirm this idea, especially in Turkey too. The numbers that you have shared with us are quite correct. There are eight facilities, eight breeding facilities in Turkey. Uh, well, previously uh, there was a presentation about iDNA. It is totally a brand new, uh, a different topic that is nice, but maybe uh, it is doable in, in Turkey too. Uh, but I think what you're saying is quite logical, but how to do it, where to do it, when to do it, uh, in what regions to do it, I do not know. But as far as I see, in Canada as well, I think, Herodo Verbana is the predominant one. I do not know. Uh, there must be other species as well, but I think they're going for the Verbana generally in North America. But in Malaysia, they are doing Herodinaria Jovanica and Venidensis only uh, in Malaysia. So they're also having their problems when it comes to breeding. But generally, Herod of Arbana, this is the name, this is the uh, context because we have lots of resources. I'm sorry, the lady has a very poor connection. You can't understand what she's saying. Şimdi ben şunu söyleyeyim. Bizden her ne kadar ticaretle e, dünya genelinde verbana gidiyorsa well, around the world well there ver verbana is also bred uh, they got the species from Turkey uh, and South uh, Europe and they started to breed it you know you know, uh, when we receive fish species from different uh, regions, from different uh, places, we got it and we breed it uh, in under license uh, conditions and we try to also provide for inspection. Uh, you know, there has to be inspection. If there is inspection, then it can be done. We don't know what will happen uh, with the hybrids and uh, with the hybrids in, in the future, uh, because once we receive oriental, uh, orientalis, I don't know whether after hybridization with orientalis, there will be a sterile species in the hand. I do not know what happens. Maybe uh, one of the previous speakers may talk about this. Can and there be sterility after hybridization? This is my question uh, to the speaker. But if you want to do it with Orientalis, if you want to have Orientalis, then closed systems can be recommended. Uh, but why do you uh, want to focus on foreign species now that you we have domestic species? Well, uh, I just wanted to make reference to what was going on in Azerbaijan. Uh, they do it successfully in Azerbaijan. They also uh, have similar problems. Well, we, the, 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 they have their own problems, you know, over there. Uh, in 2007, they had lots of problems that they had to solve. And then uh, after we gave a helping hand to them, stretched a helping hand to them, they started to breed many more. But there is one single example in Azerbaijan, so we cannot call the whole thing a good practice for the time being. Well, we have to make an evaluation of the applications uh, from, from the three days, I just wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, all of you. That was it. Well, 
sure. Well, Mr. Naim asked a question to Mr. Sergey, I think. So taking this opportunity, I'd like to give the last floor to Mr. Sergey, uh, because after his closing speech, we will call it a day for today. And tomorrow we will continue and we will resume at 10 o'clock Turkish time. Um, I see very nice interest from the people, among the people. Hopefully you will be as much interested tomorrow. Mr. Sergey, you have the floor for the closing, uh, sir. Just a couple of closing remarks from your side, sir. So, uh, I was very glad to see everybody, my friends and, and colleagues. And uh, I think it, it was very important and interesting uh, and, and interesting session. And, and we shared information, important, important information and experience. So it's very useful for all of us. And uh, I think uh, just a, a couple of words about uh, foreign leeches in Turkey. I think it's enough of of Verbana in Turkey, and it could be it could be dangerous for uh, local ecosystems if some foreign species invade these um, uh, Turkish ecosystems. I think that's not very good. It's enough of Verbana in Turkey, and Orientalis could invade local ecosystems. And it could be it could be not good for local invertebrates and local uh, and local ecosystems. So thank you very much for every uh, uh, thank you thank you very much. And uh, I was very glad to see you all. Th that's all for today. And let's meet tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sergey. Haydar Bey, söz almak ister misiniz? Mr. Haydar, you want to say something? Haydar, you want to say, say something lastly? It was such a useful event on my side too. So, to set the basis for tomorrow's uh, speeches, presentations, I want to... Well, there will be. Um, I'll be seeking your recommendations for potential collaborative areas from now on. But I'll bring it up again tomorrow. Let's see you at ten o'clock Turkish time tomorrow. See you tomorrow Turkish time, ten o'clock. Uh, I greet you all deeply once again. Have a nice rest of the day. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.